What is up my friends, welcome back to a brand new video and in today's video, we're going to be talking all about how to write a convincing and effective introduction, okay? So even if you don't like have official introductions in your music, um, I think the first impression that you give a listener in your music is very, very important, right? Because, you know, nowadays with our attention spans getting lesser and lesser, it's so easy for someone to just click out after a few seconds of, oh, this vibe, you know, I don't like that or whatever. But, <clears throat> but I think it's really important, like when we're actually working on our own music, the way we actually begin a piece of music can set the tone for the entire thing, right? So the introduction is giving the listener a chance to get invested in the emotional journey that your music is going to take them on. And so today I want to show you a song that um, is a work in progress. I basically have the orchestration finished and I've uh, very recently recorded the vocals, which I'm very excited to show you about. Um, but specifically, we're going to talk about the intro of this song, Spark, and is it was inspired by the movie Soul from Pixar and Disney. A beautiful, beautiful film, and I just really love the overall message. So this song was particularly inspired by the scene at the very end of the movie where um, I think it, his name was Joe. Uh, so I can't quite remember. Joe and 22 are about to dive down to earth together. So he's holding her hand. He's about to take her down to earth as far as he can go. And 22 is about to start her brand new life on earth right so i took inspiration from that and put it into this song and i'm, I'm i haven't showed anybody this yet so it's going to be a first time uh, but i'm going to show you the intro because i think the um the intentionality behind it is uh, is what comes across here and so you know before i wrote it i was thinking okay i want the mood to be innocent i want it to be light and i want it to feel happy and joyful you know, and then I wanted the second half of the intro to take that same idea, but develop it further, increase the orchestration, um, bring up the intensity, and uh, and it features like this single melodic motif, which is actually the hook of the chorus. So I bring that into the intro, which you know I think is uh, memorable. So <laughs> I, I brought it in, and uh, I just want to show you what this intro sounds like, and then we'll talk a little bit about the instrumentation. So here we go. And then it goes into like you, you you hear the orchestration pulls back at the verse and then the piano is by itself again but basically that motif da, 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 right that's like the first time we hear that hook in the very intro so when you bring it back i wanted to change it up a little bit i wanted to make it feel warmer i wanted to take you on this emotional journey um and if you close your eyes you can kind of see you know the, these colors moving around you might be even you might even be able to imagine like a scene where this is happening um inspired by that movie but the the idea is taking that motif which immediately attracts the listener right and then repeating it in a slightly different way uh, maybe maybe that's a different instrument in a different register. Maybe that's increasing the orchestration, um, enhancing the overall feel with more instruments. You can do a lot of things, but I think having something for the listener to latch onto, a certain melodic mo uh, motif or a certain idea is, is crucial. And that's something I try to do in all of my intros. I try to open up and create a soundscape, but also have some sort of melody that the listener can hum. Um, so I think that's really important to set a good first impression when possible. So if you just listen to the instrumentation, we start with the flute and the flute naturally being quieter, we want to leave the orchestration more sparse, right? So now it transfers to the oboe, the orchestration builds around it. There's the piano, there's the harp, the strings, and it ends in this big cymbal crash. Right? So this kind of four bar intro, let's dissect it just a little bit here. The second half, we have the piano coming in. Right, it's just providing more harmonic foundation to the overall thing. And we also have the, the harp plucks with that as well. So a very delicate instrument that plays throughout the intro here, this chord progression. Basically six, four, one, five. Okay, uh, the flute again here, this is Cinematic Studio Woodwinds. And I love it for these lead lines. It has this beautiful tone quality to it. Then the second half, because... So here, let me play that one more time. So the melody is then transferred over to the oboe. And so I wanted to take the flute and then make it play a harmonic role instead. Instead of like doubling the melody or taking it away completely. Okay. 
And in terms of the MIDI shape, you see how the oboe is kind of going down and the flute is going up. So there's this contrary motion happening that makes it feel a little bit more expansive in the context of everything else. Then we also have the strings coming in. Um, at the very beginning, it kind of just sets a little bit of an atmosphere, leaves it more open with the harp here. Now the violins too, the celli, the basses come in, they fill in the low end. Right, now it's definitely missing something in the middle, right? So then I wanted to add a choir. Trying to keep the voice leading very smooth here for the choir. As you can see. Adding more voices as the orchestration builds. Most voices. And then it kind of builds there. So that is the choir. Then I added just an additional flute. I also added an alto flute um, <laughs> for, for a little bit of more color. So it sounds like this. Just more counter melody stuff happening. Just filling in chord tones that weren't there before. And then the French horn, I think, makes all the difference. You know, I love the warm tone of the, the French horn. Right? And, and one thing you might notice is I try to keep all of my lines very melodic. And that's something that you, you should always take into consideration as an orchestrator. I guess it also depends on the style of music you're writing. But for more classical, traditional styles where there's a lot of melodies and counter melodies and things like that, you always want to think from the perspective of the performer. And for myself, I played violin before I tried the trombone in high school. I wasn't very good. Um, but I also played um, the flute and piccolo in high school. That was my main instrument there, aside from being a pianist. So I've actually played an instrument from each of the different families. And um, as a result, I kind of try to think from the perspective of the performer, like what would they enjoy playing? And that's really the big question. Would they enjoy playing this? Is it melodic? Is it interesting? Is there rhythmic variation? How does it contribute to the overall arrangement and enhance the harmony and the melody, right? So that can already give you a better perspective onto writing your own lines. Um, because if you think they're interesting, then the performers might also think they could be interesting. Con contrast that with something like a trailer piece, maybe that goes if they're if the string players are playing that for like 10 minutes, it's gonna get a little bit boring for them. It might be a little tiring as well. So make it make it easier for them to play, you know? Then I decided to add some low chords from Cine Orc just to beef up the second half of the intro. A little bit of percussion here, timpani, bass drum, cymbals, glockenspiel, uh, Tina Guo's cello, legato there, and then also the sonore horns, which sounds like this. <clears throat> so they, uh, let's do the solo horn with that as well. Uh, where is it? Right there. Sorry about those pops and clicks, but essentially you get the idea, right? The the, the horns are kind of building together. The, I love the Sonore horns because they kind of build in a way that doesn't exceed MF or even Forte. They kind of have this beautiful, sweet, round tone to them that uh, is really suited for these types of melodies that don't need that super loud layer. Uh, then a little pad here just to make it more atmospheric. This is from Elijah from Sony Score. A little bit of a deep boom here to set up the second half of the intro. That's from Metropolis Arc 2. Some harp glisses, children's choir, and Vivaldi trams from Cine Auric. Just some string tremolos there to beef it up even more. But uh, yeah, that, that's basically the idea is I think it's really important when you're starting off a piece of music. How can you take that listener in for the experience and actually capture their attention right away. And for me, I usually do that with a melodic idea that's not too long, but not too short. It gives them a chance to maybe sing it out loud or at least kind of remember it in their mind. And then you can take that idea and repeat it again, uh, maybe in a different instrument, in a different register. Um, and depending on how you want to orchestrate that, you can decide from there what type of instruments you want to use. So first impressions are very, very important, whatever you do. Um, depending on the style of music that you write. Uh, but in any case, I think just the first impression is very, very crucial. So whether that's through a melodic motif or a, you know, a bass line or a groove, something, something like that, uh, try to find a way to capture the listener's attention and bring them to the verse uh, relatively quickly. You don't want to drag it out too long, uh, but I think a four-bar intro is usually quite suitable for that. 
So anyway, that is the intro for my song Spark. I am very much looking forward to sharing this with you uh, later this year when the album is complete. And I apologize, this was not mixed or anything, but it will be. Um, yeah, and, and thank you as always for your love and support on this channel and for the work I do. I really do appreciate it and I hope what I'm producing for you is helpful in some way. So thank you very much again. And if you're interested in more techniques like these, I am launching my brand new course this week. Actually, it's it's currently for sale right now called Songwriting for Animation. And it talks specifically about, you know, theoretical techniques, um, songwriting, composing techniques to actually take your music to the next level and really enhance it with more interesting chord structures, um, you know, secrets to more melodic lines that actually keep the listener interested and invested, um, you know, orchestration techniques, uh, we'll actually take a look at 10 individual famous um, Disney Pixar songs and kind of dissect them to see what they're doing to make their music so beautiful. And then I'll actually take you through and write my own song called Empty Holes, which is very heavily inspired by the Disney genre in the first place. So all that information is down in the description box below. It's the very first link if you want to check it out. Um, it's only available until tomorrow at midnight EST time zone. And so after Friday, it's going to be um, close to the public. So if you want to get in on this at the intro price, uh, you know, definitely check it out. And I uh, can't wait to see you inside. So in any case, thank you so very much for watching this video. I'll catch you in the very next one and take care. Bye-bye.